Um, before we get into the <clears throat> the Hall H MCU panel, um, you want to just really quickly talk about the animation panel that they had Marvel? I mean, listen, I've never been a big fan of Marvel's animation. Uh, there's only been a few things that I've liked uh, from them. Um, but the only thing that I'm really looking forward to here is uh, X-Men 97 and what if two and they, they supposedly they they they, they greenlit a, a third season of one if what if two yeah so what if is locked for three seasons x-men 97 they've already committed to two seasons yeah um you know i would say well, there were two main takeaways for me but yeah otherwise i mean what if what if two most of it was kind of like more of the same in the sense of like more mixing and matching like oh you know yeah. we didn't use scarlet witch in season one she's in season two the they are using the neil gaiman 1602 run they said that's going to be that could be that could be worth a watch that's a pretty mm -hmm. popular run of sort of like marvel goes to like renaissance england kind of deal and like th th that could be some good tv um mm -hmm. that's a little bit different but uh, yeah, I thought what if was kind of like Spider-Man freshman year. I would I would kind of say like I don't care yet. It's it's way out in 2024. Uh, we need to see a little bit more before I kind of like decide like hey, that's something that I, I'm really interested in watching. X-Men 97. Like it, I mean, they got the they have some new creatives on it, but they have some of the old creatives back. I was excited. The entire voice cast is resigned. I was yeah. pleased to see that. You know, Cal Dodd, obviously Wolverine. He's probably the most notable, but everyone coming back. And then it looked like really the only change is I guess Magneto is going to take over the Professor X spot in the cartoon, Cause, which because he's not there. Well, I was just about to say, so that would imply that this is a direct continuation of the, the way five, season the, the, five ended, yes. right? He's kind of like off with the with the Shi'ar or whatever. Like, um, so you saw that episode? I watched it today. What you thought? I went back and watched it today. I was like, it it was weird. Like it's like I remembered most of it and then i was like oh i didn't totally remember the like some of the yeah. sequences but yeah no mm -hmm. it's it was good so that that got me like on the same page of what they're doing here and i'm like oh they literally are continuing this yes 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 and yeah. look uh, yeah I, i'm very interested interested in seeing where they go with this uh because uh if you didn't know if they didn't even it, i don't i don't know if they mentioned it but um they're basically um are going to search for Professor X. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be very interesting to see. And Magneto being in charge of the X-Men, that dynamic with Wolverine, that's that's going to be very, very interesting to see. I'm very excited for that. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. When is that supposed to come out? Uh, it is in the fall of 2023, and each season is 10 episodes. So that'll be pretty, pretty tight. Okay. 10 episodes seems 20 like... episodes they've committed so they're going to write okay. 20. okay two, two blocks of 10. yeah okay um i mean the announcement that we just got with regards to one of the titles that's going to be getting 18 episodes is really cool it's crazy so before you get to that <laughs> yeah there was one other thing in this panel that i thought was actually probably the most notable thing and I think it actually has some influence on the things we're about to talk about. So Marvel Zombies, not a show I'm particularly interested in watching, but TVMA rated yeah. got my attention. Yes. Which means yes. that they're willing to make it. We wondered this because some of the Hulu stuff was TVMA, like the MODOK mm -hmm. series. But we yes. said if, they, if they're willing to make Marvel Zombies TVMA, then some of the other stuff we're about to talk about here is going to be R-rated. And if okay. it's going to be R-rated, I'm, I'm back on board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Brian and I were, were anticipating the, the Hall H presentation from Kevin Feige. Um, for many of us that weren't in attendance, we were just looking at uh, live blogs and just getting the... The announcements as they came on as to whoever who whoever reported it they just put it up and and man i wish i was there we gotta go what we should try to go next year yeah we should um, Kevin, like you said they're coming back next year so yeah we gotta go we gotta go next year we gotta make it happen um 
So how do you want to start this, Brian? Do you want to go down the list of um, dates as he presented them? And then just go into it from there, or you can take whatever direction you want. I mean, the way I think it was, I don't know if you want to do any like overall impressions. I had a couple. Um, I do think there was a little bit of Marvel and Disney acknowledging some of the concerns. That are out there. And the reason I say that is because the fact that they put phase six with only three, I mean, absolutely like must have titles out there, but it's so incomplete, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think that happens. Oh, no, 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 no. Phase four has been crushing it. I think if phase four was rolling along like phase three had, mm -hmm. I think they would have left it at phase five, maybe plus Fantastic Four. And mm -hmm. I think they keep the two Avengers movies in the bag. But I think because there's some angst going around about the lack of a grand plan and where are we going with this, I think they got pushed a little bit into, and maybe even moved the timetable up because this is an aggressive timetable to put out the two Avengers movies. That's yeah, none of this is set in stone, except for the ones that we know are coming very soon. Yeah. Um, that was my like number one like overall impression. It was like that that's their version of feeling the pressure a little bit and kind of making sure they give you something extra. This I would say is a result of their retreat, probably. This is the grand plan after going on their retreat. So um so obviously we're getting um Ant Man. Next year, February 17, 2023, we got a, a a glimpse. Well, that's for Guardians. But for Ant-Man, we didn't get a lot of stuff. I, I know Jonathan Majors came out. They um, showed a trailer, but they haven't released it yet. Ah, oh, wow. That's crazy. So that the, the things that I could get from the live updates about the trailer was simply that this version of Kang apparently looks and acts pretty menacing, pretty cool, and, inclu and includes a uh, a pretty cool line where he says you're an avenger have i killed you before oh which i think is pretty cool <laughs> so i'm i'm excited how would he know. how would he know that though how would yeah. the other guy know that like what? yeah so anyway <laughs> so that's going to be very interesting i'll pr that's probably a rhetorical question yeah um wow um so we're getting at man february 17th looking forward to that we've said in the past that this movie is up there in terms of um compared to the first ant-man and the second ant-man this ant-man has a lot of uh interest and excitement surrounding it because of kang and what we may see in the quantum realm um so very much looking forward to that brian and we're getting modok Apparently, yes, a very, uh, apparently a very comic book accurate Modoc too. Yeah, which is, I mean, obviously they did the animated show, but now to see a live action version, and this is a, this is a, this is a, it's a distinctive looking character. If you're not familiar with the comic, I know, right? Google it. So this will be interesting. I did, I did throw out to you, like, I don't, know, if it is going to be comics accurate, is this what Bill Murray was doing? Is he voicing this? I don't know. Like, I don't believe so. I believe he is the ruler of that city. Okay. In the quantum realm that we saw in the second film? The second one? Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. His name is something, Kyla, I forget. Um, also confirmed one thing that we said way back when they announced that, or when the rumors were circulating that Kang was in Ant-Man 3, way back when, our reaction was Ant-Man 3 is getting the call up. Like Ant-Man's coming up to the, to the varsity level. And I think yeah. today... You got the confirmation because the way they rejiggered the phases, that's the leadoff spot of phase four. Five. Yeah. 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 And it makes sense, Brian. Um, because I think they they ended it, they started with Black Panther Wakanda Forever being the last of phase four. 
which is definitely a course correction. That's yes. not what it originally, we were about midway through. And now they're saying the She-Hulk TV show and the Wakanda Forever movie will end what I think most people would say has been an uneven to disappointing phase four. Yes. So that's that, man. Coming out February 17th, 2023. Looking forward to seeing that. The next item on the agenda was uh, Secret Invasion, Spring 2023. Brian, this is something I stated in previous podcasts that Secret Invasion to me was a very uh, big storyline. Um, and it seems, did they say how many episodes was this going to be? Don't believe so. No, because I would assume this is a limited series. This is not going to have like a second season or anything like that. So uh, my thought was that, oh, hope that after this series would end, that we would get a secret invasion finale movie, but that doesn't look like it's going to be. Well, it will be tied into, I think what's out in phase six. Got it, got it. Would be my guess. But. So, uh, but nonetheless, I'm still looking forward to seeing what this uh, TV show is gonna uh, show us um, and how it's done. There's gonna be a lot going on in there. Um, you are? Are you high on this move on this show? Yeah. So I actually went through, and I, we could talk about. I ranked the, 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 in phase five. There are 12 projects that Kevin listed, six films and six TV shows. Um, I actually have Ant-Man as my most anticipated film of the six. Really? Uh, uh, I, really I do. I stand by that. And that's my number one. Secret Invasion is my second most anticipated show of the six they have listed. I think you can probably guess what I have as number one. But um, yeah, so to your point, I'm still super yeah. excited. About it. So I have that as my number two. TV show, Ant Man is my number one anticipated movie of the ones there. By the way, that does not include. That's only Phase Five, so we're kind of forever is not in that. It's not in that. Movie, so, uh, I would agree with you, Brian. I am very. That's number one for me, Ant Man. But I would say a close second would be Captain America: New World Order. Uh, just that, just the title, New World Order, is just. Uh, guess you like thinking of what's this going to be you know what i'm saying uh so uh and we don't know any details about this movie just yet anyway i have to have to talk to my sources but um i'm assuming that this is going to be dope hopefully who knows i don't think the roosters is going to do captain america 4 no chance but i hope this Actually, lives no, we, are, we already know they're not they're, it's the it's the um they just announced a director for Captain America 4, and they've obviously got the same writer. I'll get the name while we're talking about it. They confirmed okay. it. They have a director. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a younger, it's like a younger guy. Um, and then it, they're using Malcolm Spellman, who wrote Falcon and Winter Soldier, the show. He's writing the film. Got it. Uh, so some of that, some of that crew. No, I agree with you. That's an interesting one. But I just think, I don't know, for me, like Kang is, I'm so fascinated oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah, Kang yeah, that yeah. like, me too. I, that's what kind of elevates Ant. -Man. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Um, next up is, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which will be the last of James Gunn. Hooray. Hopefully this is a good movie. Um, there's a lot to look forward to with Adam Warlock. And what happens to the Guardians of the Galaxy after this? How this ends? Yeah. Your thoughts? Warlock is kind of like. I got to be honest, if, if Adam Warlock was not being teased as a major player in this movie, and I guess we got uh, some new characters, right? This is where this is where the the, uh, the, con the high continuity is in this movie, right? That's high, 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 high evolutionary. High evolutionary, sorry, is is in this movie. Yeah, right. they, they were trotting people out like right and left. So yeah, that's in this movie. I think some of those new additions, and by the way, that he was there, the actor, I cannot. Yes. And he was in costume and it looked just like the comics to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which is interesting because james gunn has not always been a comics accurate guy when it comes to his sort of design mm -hmm. but i gotta be honest, if those things were not major thrusts of this movie that would be my number six i gotta yeah. be honest i'm kind of to your point i'm a little bit james gunned out i feel like the guardians as a crew like seeing them in love and thunder i was kind of like a reminder of like i had a good run with these these characters, characters you know, yeah. sort of like ready to ready for something else. But so yeah. I kind of have this as my number five. 
of the six, but the reason it's not six is because of Warlock and uh, High Evolutionary. Yeah. Um, Echo comes out summer 2023. Yep. Um, I don't know what to think about this other than that Daredevil is going to show up. Vincent D'Onofrio is going to Vincent D'Onofrio Kingspin is going to show up. Uh, I don't. I want to see this. Yep. Not ex- not totally excited to see it, but I I, I want to see it w- when it comes out and 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 what the uh, how we we'll end up when we when we do see it. Brian, are you excited for Echo? Do you have similar thoughts on in terms of how you feel about it? I'm interested, but in the context of what else got announced. Oh yeah, I'm just kind of like, is this like a daredevil show masquerading under the name of echo or is this truly going to be an echo centric show and those other guys are going to be sort of in and out just a little bit i'm a little i just i'm a little unsure as to like i know what the comic storyline after he he has he loses his eye and her hands like there's a big arc there so does that like lead us into the other show that they announced or i don't know i just yeah, I guess, let, 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 consider me curious, I, you know, for the record. So I had it fourth of the six uh, TV shows. That's where I had this one. Then we get Loki season two, Brian, which the I think only, we... The only season two. This is the only season two that was confirmed of anything. Mm-hmm. In case people were wondering, so. Yeah, um, that's exciting. Um... I want to see where this goes because I'm pretty sure we're going to get more Kang possibly. Yep. Or, or different Kang. Yep. So that's um, exciting. Where do you have that on your list? Three. Uh, and, I, and I really have, the, I, to me, there's a, a there's a top tier of three shows and then a, a pretty big drop to four, five, and six. That's my opinion. So like, I have it three, but like Secret Invasion 2, like, they're very close, neck and neck. And I feel safe that like, even though Loki, they're changing the director, that the, the writing staff and the ideas like, and Kang being now like evil variant Kang, it seems in this version that Loki's in. Yeah, very excited to bring this one back. Unlike how I felt going into season one. So. Yeah. Um, Then the Marvels was announced. Before we get to the Marvels, Brian, let's just get this out the way. A She-Hulk trailer came out, Brian, Yo, when I saw this dude, yo, they have absolutely, I don't care what nobody says, they have absolutely ruined the Hulk. The The Hulk, Hulk he is a green big guy. He's just, oh my God. And apparently, I don't know if you saw this, Brian, that he signed another contract for four years. I forget, I forget what, what, what it was, but what? To be Hulk again, and then that'll be it, supposedly. To be Professor Hulk like this, where he's doing like yoga and. Yo, when I saw that, Brian, I. I knew it. I, that's why I texted you. I was like, uh oh, I'm going to break stuff in his, in his studio. When he, when, he when he did the crane pro pose, yo, uh, yo, my stomach, I was like, yo, I'm sorry, man. The Hulk is, is just a joke and it's and it's one of the things that that ha- like if i went into the marvel studios and talked with him and found out that's my first thing i'm not gonna talk like yo what, what what happened to the hulk man what happened i felt bad hulk- too, like you know i felt bad because this this show nothing about this show seems like it's gonna work but then i was like the hulk has fallen so far that they're using him in the training montage to show that Jennifer Walters can literally out Hulk him in everything <laughs> right out of the gate. And I'm like, are we that low? Like they did his clap and him. everything. She's punching him, she's out jumping him. I'm like, man, like you are like that dude on my Saturday <laughs> morning wrestling show in the blue singlet that they send out to the ring to get stomped on for three minutes. Like, oh my God. Um, it's rough. And it's not funny. Like that stick was entertaining and kind of like a diversion when it first hit and it's just like there's nothing like we, we've seen it right we talked about it with love and thunders i feel the same way about professor hall yeah 
Uh, that's, uh, I mean, the 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 VFX didn't look that much better. No, it still looks like weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb, Brian, and say that there's gonna be a lot of praise for this. Possibly, really, I think it's so. because it's different. Because it's so different, you think? Yes, it's thirty minutes. I don't know how many episodes is it nine? Yeah, for thirty minutes, nine episodes. Um, People like Tatiana Maslany. I will say that because of like her other TV work. He's pretty popular. So. so that's what I'm saying. I mean, Brian, you and I, our sense of humor or, or things that we like that we consider funny, um, we may not think this this show is going to be that, but there's going to be a lot, I think, a lot of other people that are going to po possibly enjoy the situation that she's in and are, gonna, and are going to have fun with that. So let's see. Well, um, the, the One thing I'll uh -huh. say just before we leave it, the trailer uh -huh. made clear, to me at least, I mean, there's definitely concern around this show because they're packing it with characters you know. It's a Wong shows up. You know, we knew Abomination was in it. They tease Matt Murdock at the end. There's rumors of maybe even a Fantastic Four character making an appearance. And that, like, when anytime you see a show where they start loading in the known names as like, hey, you got to see this, this and that. Means they're not means they're worried about the central central thrust of the show. Perhaps that what that may be the saving grace of the show, Brian. Let's see. The Marvels, July 2023. Brian, the only thing that I'm looking forward to is the possibility of Blue Marvel showing up. <laughs> that is it. Yeah, it's my number six. Yeah. Uh that's no, that's yeah. that that's it. Um I don't know what's going to happen in this film. I think we've spoken about it previously as to what may occur or what uh, characters may have some tension. Uh, but uh, other than that, man, I, I hope that the Marvels includes Blue Marvel or at least a tease or a possible end credit scene of that character in his own feature film, which I think is very, very interesting uh it, by itself and uh i hope they it do include him brian do you feel the same way with regards to your interest in the marvels yeah i, I think this is the reason why i have this number six is not because i think it's going to be a bad film i said i think that the way we left captain marvel after what was a pretty average first outing is you, you got to prove it to me and that's kind of how I feel about this. Like, I think the, the formula for how this movie can work, you got a new director. So obviously, obviously Disney and Marvel felt the same way, right? If, if they thought Anna Boden and Ryan Fleck were that, you know, all that with this movie, they'd be back. They're not. Yeah. yeah. So you got a new director. Um, but I think the number one way that this thing works is you got to take a little bit of the, not the Thor Love and Thunder model, but Hemsworth and Brie Larson, right? Hemsworth, where he started in Thor 1, he clearly worked on that character. He changed it. Obviously, now we feel like maybe he went a little too far in some of the changes. But my point is that he evolved. And as he evolved, Thor became a more interesting, dynamic character within the MCU. Brie Larson has an Academy Award sitting in her house somewhere. So mm -hmm. the number one way that this movie gets better is that she finds a little different portrayal. Because I don't think she quite nailed it in the first time yeah. out. Which is okay. Yeah. That happens. Yeah. I do think they have... But, and Mavalani is going to help this movie, having seen Miss Marvel. There's yeah, no yeah. way she hurts this movie. That's going to help them. But then it's yeah. like, what do you get out of Maria Rambo in this movie? Like, can you get, or is it Monica? Monica Rambo. Monica. Yeah. yeah. As, as So what do you get out of her in this movie? That chemistry's got to be there. It's got to work uh, for this to kind of take a step up. But I think until we see a trailer, until we hear some buzz, until we hear something that's like, yeah, this they got the Captain Marvel world correct in a way that they didn't in the first one it's just not as exciting to me because i don't know that like the stakes of this yet because we don't know the storyline i don't know that the stakes of this are like are as comparable to the first one where it's like we needed what was in that film to get to where we all wanted to get to in yeah. in uh, endgame yeah um 
Next, we got Blade. Brian, is this going to be Marvel's first rated R film? Thought it was interesting Deadpool's not on the calendar officially. Wondered where it was, right? I mean, that was... Yeah, I, I thought that there was going to be something. A surprise, but nothing, nothing, nothing. So I figured that's a D23. Mm -hmm. But I was surprised, and I'm assuming it's in phase six because all the slots in phase five were filled and a lot of phase six was empty, but that means Deadpool 3 is pretty far out. And we thought that they were writing it, like it's happened, like they're putting it together now. So you might be right. This might, this, this, I don't see any chances is not R rated. Certainly not after seeing that Marvel Zombie, that's my point. You're getting even Marvel Zombies in R rating. You won't, but like you might as well yeah, do the yeah, right yeah. thing, right? So yeah. that's coloring my ranking. I actually have this number two. And just because it, if it is R-rated, and I just don't know quite know to, what to expect, but I'm fascinated. I'm just like, yeah. if you get this right, and it's the right tone, and Herschel, our lead, you know, takes his two Oscars and delivers yeah. that kind of performance as the Daywalker, like, we might have something here. And I think he will, Brian, because he was so eager to play this. Yep. Um, and from what I've heard, this is insider information, from what I've heard, the action scenes was going to be spectacular. Well, there you go then. So, and they're going back to his roots. They're going comic book accurate and going back to the 1920s. Uh, I forget what's his actual name, um, but they're really going comic book accurate with this 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 movie, and um, we're going to be seeing some. Uh, some interesting things different than what uh, we saw in the original Blade. No, I so, think that's good. I think that's good. Yeah. They have to. Yeah, they, they have, have to. to. You don't want to. But caught in the, yeah, the comparison is still going to be there because of Mahershala Ali, yeah. you know, and his similarities with Wesley Snipes, um, and just the people. People are just going to compare. So there's going to be a lot of people, those fans that are going to go see this movie. It's going to be a very successful movie, I think. Yeah. So that's my number two of the films. Yeah. yeah. Brian, Ironheart, um, I guess we'll have to wait and see because what kind of, of, yes, exactly. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Not very, not totally interested in this 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 show. I have it five right now, but I have I feel the same as you. It's like five with like a placeholder. It's like, yeah, yeah, we got to wait and see the next one. Brian is another one. I don't really care too much of, but I know she has some history with doom. Um, I don't know if they're going to make connections with that. Um, but yeah, um, I'm interested a little bit because I did like her, 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 um, character and she was left in a state that leaves you wondering. What's happened to her? And how did she get out of that state that she was put in? And and she's and she's great. And she was great in that role. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, not totally excited about it. Not totally interested, but curious. So that's my number six. You're talking about Agatha. Um, there's, there's a, there is a part of me, after having gone through Book of Fett, which wonders if this is a backdoor like WandaVision season two and they're just not saying it. There's a little part of me that's like, yeah. after they, well, look, I mean, Book of Fett, they literally pivoted and made it Mandalorian season two and a half, right? Middle way, way through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at this character and I'm like, she's a nice supporting character and I just don't see why she should anchor her own show. But then I'm like, after seeing that, I'm like, well, maybe it's because part of this show is just going to be we're getting back to Scarlet Witch somehow. And like, that's yeah. really, they just don't want to tell you that yet. But yeah, yeah. if it is an Agatha show or six to nine episodes, it's my number six. I'm not that interested. Yeah, yeah. Now, Daredevil. Spring 2024, we got a ways to go. But, They've chosen to do something unprecedented, Brian. 
from the measly six episodes that we're used to seeing, they're going to go straight into how things used to be. When you used to get for a season, you get used to get like 20 something episodes or whatever, 26. We're getting 18 episodes of Daredevil. And we are assuming that this will be rated R. I'm pretty sure, Brian, that everyone who has been looking forward to seeing the Daredevil in the MCU, they're ecstatic about 18 episodes, Brian. Obviously, this is your number one. Yeah, if it's not you, if it's, I feel like for the average fan, if this is not your number one, I'm kind of like, I don't really know what you're looking to get out of the TV show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure John Campion has Agatha as number one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I can't wait till Monday to see his show. Uh, oh, man. So, yeah, R rated Daredevil, you know, Charlie Cox confirmed, Vincent D'Onofrio confirmed, title. Also really interesting, and I think for a lot of comic fans, we'll get Born Again. So Born Again uh, is a Frank Miller Daredevil run from the 80s. Uh, it's very well regarded. Uh, Daredevil goes to some really dark places. Kingpin really kind of works him over. And, you know, he basically, I think at one point Daredevil is like, a, he's almost like a homeless guy. He like loses everything to his name. Wow. Like He's like sleeping on the streets, like, and he has to kind of fight his way back. and. It's uh, and, and it's weird because they they imported little bits of that into season three of the Netflix show. So there might be an inkling here that this is maybe a more contiguous thing than they've previously let on. But I hope to find it funny because I remember when the Netflix show was on, there was at least a little bit of like, well, you know, maybe 13 episodes was too many. It should be like nine or 10 when they when you were binging it. And the Marvel's like, yeah, watch this. We're going to do 18. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I think we probably oh, get. Yeah. Gonna, how many of these are they putting out at once? Because if they're doing one a week for eighteen weeks, I'm gonna be That's like a long time. Oh my but, god! But still, it's it's still the excitement and the the building of anticipation week to week is just gonna be tremendous. And I think this is gonna be also one of these shows where you into you have these cameos as well, not as much as She Hulk, but you're gonna probably get Jessica Jones. Yeah, this will and, be the world of the defenders, right? Like this will be the war. Anyone you want to touch on, you use this show to do. Yeah. So, Brian, I can't wait for Daredevil Spring Twenty Twenty Four. This is the most exciting thing of Phase Five, in my yes. opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Like TV or film, this is it. Yeah. Um, which leads us to Captain America, um, New World Order coming to you May 2024. Uh, we, I, Brian, I just got to wait and see. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm sh I'm excited just because of the New World Order title. I want to see what this is all about. What does this new world look like? Um, and most people are just sort of expecting or were expecting to see uh, Steve Rogers in this. Uh, but this is so, this is Sam Wilson. This is Anthony Mackie's big big thing here. I remember um, there's a there's and I'm pretty sure they're going to replay this. Where Spider, I mean uh, Tom Tom Holland and Anthony Mackie are sitting at a at some sort of uh, event and they're talking about and uh, they asked Anthony Mackie if he saw Spider Man and he said no, right? And Tom Holland said I didn't see yours. Oh, you don't have one. Now he has one. Doubt is going to be as successful as yours, Tom, but it's certainly something people will be curious and interested in seeing and can't wait to see what this movie, in terms of the trailer, what is going to look like, the feel, the tone. Um, yeah, so I'm very interested in this uh, movie, Brian. Yeah, it's you? my number three. It's my number three. Um, I'm a big, you know, I, the grand speech notwithstanding at the end of Falcon and Winter Soldier. I've been a big fan of Mackey's portrayal of Sam Wilson from Winter Soldier on. I think he's one yeah, of the yeah, gold, yeah. gold mines that 
that uh, Marvel has found. So Julius Ona, that's the director. He's a Nigerian filmmaker. He's in his 30s. He only has three credits, uh, the most notable of which was The Cloverfield Paradox. But like, in a weird way, I'm kind of excited because this is the kind of director that Marvel usually does pretty well with, right? The, like the guy that's up and coming, that isn't so set in his ways, but then is maybe passionate or able to kind of adapt into the formula. So like, I kind of, I'm like, even though he's not a known quantity, it's like there's a little bit of that Russo-ish tinge on a guy like this. So I, I'm interested. Like I said, you got Spellman writing. Um, and we got a ways off here, but yeah, look, I mean, I think I think it's to, to get this character back in the mainstream would be would be fun to see. And it kind of sets up participation in the, the next round of Avengers films, which kind of feels right. Like it kind of feel odd not to have a Captain America be part of that. So yeah, so yeah that's my number three. I'm kind of with you. I'm like, I'm betting on the the unknown as much as anything. And I, I did get the, when, when when we saw the trademark thing come across yesterday in New World Order, I, I'm, hopefully I'm not the only one that got like Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, <laughs> like all images in my head. I was like, I don't know. That's, better that's the New World Order than I know. Better but... <laughs> better better I used to love that joint. Oh, God, yeah. So, but, yeah, no. Hopefully, hopefully the most, it's up to original the, NWO. So, yeah. The most memorable thing about the NWO is when Hulk Hogan did the leg drop on Macho Man the first time. Everybody, when he went up and everybody was like, oh, <laughs> everybody went crazy. That's that was dope. Um, the last thing they had on for 2024, I believe, was uh, or for phase five, yeah, Thunderbolts as a movie. Yep, as a movie, I thought it was a show. Is a movie? No, it's a movie, I think. Okay, yeah, I thought I heard some dudes talking about it, it being a show. Um, I think I gave my perspective. Well, actually, I did, but we didn't, we're not going to put out the show. But um, I'm curious because we only been given cer certain um, lead into the possibility of Thunderbolts. Yeah. Um, but we still haven't gotten any situation where it calls for this team to be activated so i'm curious i'm interested a lot of uh interesting characters um let's just wait and see what are your thoughts on thunderbolts yeah it's i feel similarly in that i i like the acting talent that they're lining up here, right? You got you got Julia Louis Dreyfus Contessa, you got Wyatt Russell, US agent. Um, I'm assuming Daniel Brule as Zemo and Florence uh, Pugh. You are Pugh. So you're like, okay, we're we're batting a thousand with that. Abomination. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's right, right. We know that Blonsky's been sort of converted a little bit by so we're doing real well with that. I, I just to your point, I don't know the stakes of why we're doing this yet. Um, and I kind of need to know like you know, and it's interesting. They put that as the end. That's the that's the end of phase five. And then we obviously will talk about phase six, which is a much larger scale. But that would suggest that, like, to them, that's there's a culmination there. There's something big that they intend to kind of put in that film and or in that project. And I uh, just sort of TBD. So I kind of have it right now. I have it at number four among the films. Um, but it probably is kind of similar to like Ironheart as the show in the sense of like, you can definitely do things that will force me to pop that up um, a slot or two. Yeah. Do we get Red Hulk and does Ross get recast? So 100% yes on a Ross recast. I don't think you can really sustainably have this universe without Thunderbolt Ross and, you know, God Ross is so William Hurt, but I think you're going to need that. Um, is it bad if I say I'll take any Hulk other than the one we've got? <laughs> a, re a red Hulk yeah. will be uh, 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 <laughs> gray Hulk. Give me the gray Hulk. Give me <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Fix It. <laughs> Not this creation. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what that is. That joint looks like it belong on some like a Nick at night. I don't know, but it's just. Come on, guys. Like, 
Like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Why, I don't understand why can't they get this character correct. So we're done with the Thunderbolts. You know, I will say this. I think Thunderbolts is going to be a good test of one thing that I think Marvel's struggling with a little bit right now is you need the right stakes for your projects. Like, you can't always have everything be like the, the universe is about to end. Yeah, of course, because then it gets but, like... But then it's like, we're not getting the team back together. The universe is about to end, but like only you and me are going to go save, save. So Thunderbolt strikes me as a project where you got to have just the right stakes. You got to have the, it's got to be like the right problem for those type of characters to solve yeah. without the help of Thor of course. or people like that. That's the, I think, going to be key to how good that movie is. There has to be some real shady stuff going on um, that they can't, contact these guys that they have to send these guys yeah so that's going to be very interesting then um brian we got the big announcements people we were getting sort of uh afraid of the possibility that we're going we weren't going to get an avengers movie anytime soon and then underwhelmed by phase five overall it's like oh they're doubling down on phase four <laughs> in the sense of like they you know because it wasn't you look at these projects and you're kind of like there's a lot of fun stuff in here, but there's not necessarily the, the singular drive through this as well. So it felt yeah. like a little bit more of the same in terms of approach and style. And I was like, oh, that's interesting that they're willing to stretch this out further. But then through everyone, some bones. Yeah, I, well, before we get into the Avengers, Fantastic Four was announced, right? Push back from phase four to phase six. Dude, um, right. I mean, like Fantastic Four was supposed to end the original Phase Four. That's the way they. Uh, okay. And so now with Watts leaving, they clearly don't have a director and a cast ready to trot out. Maybe they do next month at D twenty or two months in D twenty three. I think that's realistic. But it's now in Phase Six. It got pushed a whole way a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. so. Um. So yeah. Fantastic Four, November 2024. Everybody was waiting for that. We don't got a cast. That's whatever. All we know is that they can't do, and they will not do what was done with the original two Fantastic Four releases. Oh, let's forget that. Three releases. So they got, Fantastic Four got to be dope. It just has to be because three strikes already. There's three strikes. You 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 keep on going to, and it's been bad after bad after bad. And now it's like this is you have the properties now, right? And it has to be dope. It ha Fantastic Four can't go out like that. Uh, I guess we'll get into a conversation some some other time in terms of what the Fantastic Four has to be in order to be successful, Brian. Yeah, we've talked about it a little bit, but I, to your point. I think it's also tough, not impossible, but it's with all the properties that you have, it'd be tough to have Fantastic Four sitting on the shelf because you couldn't make it commercially viable. Like these yeah. characters are really well known. They are the first family. Like you got to have them in good hands and active and kind of even, if, you know, both having the capacity to carry their own movie, but then be able to participate in the Avengers, like they, they have to be able to do that. So if you yeah. mess this up, it's kind of like you make it so that nobody wants to see them ever again. Like that's a that's a big hole. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a huge hole. Brian, then um Mr. Feige gives us <laughs> before we get into that multiverse saga. I was a little bit I was confused as to what the multiverse saga is being, um, what that they're applying that name to. Are they applying that name to the whole? Yes. Phase four, phase was, five, phase six. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. They trademark so, they trademark that phrase, and then supposedly are applying it to all three phases. Yeah. Wow. Imagine we would have trademarked multiverse saga they have to buy from us that would have been dope anyway secret wars this is not nothing we weren't um heading towards yeah we knew this was the end yeah this one 
one that I did not know, Brian, or thought that this was included with regards to the Secret Wars, but they made a different Avengers movie and it's going to be called the Kang Dynasty. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Possibly a little bit more than Secret Wars. I agree with you. Because I'm a big Jonathan Majors fan. And who will be involved? We don't know who's going to be involved in this, this movie. Avengers, oh, well, Avengers, but which Avengers? Because You're right. You're right. Because so, the roster is so big now. Yeah. Brian, think about this. Kang Dynasty. Time Traveler. Is it possible that they may, may? Yo, Robert, what you doing? Hey, Chris, what you doing? It's a possibility, Brian. Your thoughts on the Kang Dynasty? Well, that would be great if Kang then gets to say, all you Avengers, I have killed you before. <laughs> <laughs> he wipes all of them out. As our way... First off, all kidding aside, I guarantee you some of those actors would actually be much more likely to come back if that was the scenario, right? It's yeah. the Harrison Ford in Star Wars, right? It's like, I'll come back. But you got to kill gotta me. Send me home. Like, yeah. And like, it wouldn't shock me if a, a couple of the old OGs were like, we'll do this, but we're going to be the sacrificial lamb that kind of gets everyone like, oh, no, like this guy, this guy's out of control. But look, yeah, I, here's the thing. Kang has some upside that even Josh Brolin as Thanos didn't simply because of the fact that they really didn't deploy Thanos as a character until Infinity War. So Brolin had to kind of do all his lifting in one movie and he did, he was awesome. Yeah. But like the way they've installed majors, he's got like three, four, five real outings to where like you can get to Kang Dynasty and let's assume that's like an Empire Strikes Back where he basically is gonna like win effectively yeah. put them in such a world of hurt that it looks like they can't get out of it yeah we're like you're terrified of this guy by the yeah. time you get there and so like yeah I'm, I'm with you like it's that's actually the more fun adventure than like yeah put, putting things back together and that and that word terrifying and this is i think it was a word that he used in uh the last episode of uh loki yeah they're much more terrifying so i want to see what this this iteration of Kang, all the uh, all these Kangs are gonna look like, and what they're gonna be, and how they're gonna um, pursue their agenda, whatever that may be. Very, very interesting. The Avengers: The Kang Dynasty is like. I'm gonna go out and say that this may be one of the top Avengers movies when it does come out. Yeah, I agree. I also think that it shows how much confidence they have in Majors because, like, this arc is set up for him to be the the the, the MVP. And if he's <laughs> if he wasn't like if he had come into Loki, like let's just think about it. Like if he had come into Loki, and we were like, what the, what is this? Like, Man. think about how differently you view this progression. Yeah. But because he was so good in that episode, you're like. Give me as many variants as possible. Yeah. But yeah. it's on him. Like he, I think he probably is your biggest winner and biggest star of all of this. Um, if, if 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 it all kind of goes to form, I do not think we see this on the timeline that Kevin is saying. Though. Of course, no, 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 it no. It's so aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when when he was when they were going on, when I was seeing the announcement, I was like, "Word." I <laughs> and so to give people a second, they right now they have two Avengers movies six months apart in 2025. Yeah. Yeah. And in total, if you look at the slots they have, they have, I believe it's 23 different film and television projects they're trying to get done in the next three years. No, like yeah. I, I just don't see it. I, I think it's much more likely you see the two Avengers movies in like maybe one at the end of 2025 maybe one at the end of 2026 at the earliest i think if yeah. anything i would take kind of like a lot of this stuff might slip still um by a couple of months if not a year so yeah um then we got the secret wars and he said secret wars will close out phase six 
so this Secret Wars will probably be like an end game, correct? Yeah. Like, did they announce just one or two? You, you, I'm pretty sure there's going to be two. Okay, so now you're into some, something I think is interesting as well, right? Because there's only two movies with an Avengers label, and yeah. they are six months apart, which if you're taking it at face value, would actually make you think that Kang Dynasty is part one and Secret Wars is part two, unless you think one of the other movies along the way, like whether it's Thunderbolts, whether it's Ant-Man 3, is sort of like a quasi-Avengers movie in disguise, and you just can't tell that yet. Mm -hmm. um, or, to your point, they intend to divide Secret Wars even further, which probably is the more logical outcome that when we get there, is that they just push it to a third film. But either way, it all yeah. speaks to like, it's just so jammed up. It just seems like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Last thing before we move on to the big reveal that the you know the the trailer that we were yeah. all waiting for. Um, well, as its own, that, as it what well, as it should have been, that was the main event, even more than. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Definitely. Did. Yeah, they did it right. Um, do you think in Secret Wars we meet the Beyonder? Well, that's an interesting question. I mean, it would make sense. I mean, that would. I think so. Why not? Keanu Keanu Reeves as the Beyonder. Yeah, you want Keanu Reeves. It makes guy. sense. It makes sense. Beyonder is perfect. It's a perfect role for him. So, but uh, yeah, let's see. So before we get to before we get to um, Black Panther, we had that report right before Comic Con saying where they were trying to get the expectations down. They're like Marvel's punting big announcements to D twenty three. You won't see it because I don't think people are going to see the preview show, but I think we very accurately predicted. I think I feel even stronger about that today. That one thing that would not be a Comic-Con, but would go to D23 is everything X-Men expert. Yes, 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 yes. I assume you agree. That's like, yes. yes. Do you think, Brian, at D23 with the X-Men, do we see something similar with how Netflix does things in, and Disney replicating. And I mean, will they, will they, um, sorry, my wife just texted me, hello. Will they do X-Men films? on Disney and shows. Okay. Yeah, on Disney Plus and shows. Movie and Disney, because there's a lot. Mutants is a, is a lot. They can't do just a movie. I, I, I don't know. Because again, I think it's just, we have so, so many characters to deal with. And from what it seems to me with the, uh, with, with the revelation, about the uh, um, mutation finally being revealed in in in, in Miss Marvel in the last episode, seems like they starting from the from the beginning, perhaps. So I posited in the preview show that I thought that the X Men represented an opportunity to synchronize Disney Plus and the big screen in a way that they haven't really done so far with um, the existing MCU. This connections but not like true harmony mm -hmm. so the short answer to your question i think the answer is yes um i think the mutants as they might call them or x-men to me is its own like avengers type movie it's the would you bring the team together if you want to have them fight magneto's team if you want to have them fight sebastian shaw's team that's a culmination big screen project but we have promoted and pitched the Wolverine anthology series. You could do Cyclops and Gene. You could do, you know, Gambit. You could, you could do Disney Plus limited series films as a way to introduce individual characters and build hype toward them joining forces on the big screen. That makes a lot of sense to me, depending on how many characters you want to throw out there as your initial initial go around. I actually kind of like that even a little bit more than just 
hey, let's put a, you know, that phase six, there's a lot of empty slots in there. I'm assuming an X film might be one of those slots, you know, but yeah, I, I think there's certain characters here that I, I don't think can carry like their own two hour big screen movie and be expected to generate 700 million a box, but I think could be awesome with the right talent in six episodes or two hours in streaming and get you in a way that like, to use a comparison, since she is the first mutant, Miss Marvel is going to get you more excited about the Marvels. I think you can do that model with some of these some of these mutant characters. So yeah. yes, the short answer is yes. And D23 is a perfect place to not only showcase that, but if you have a director, if you have a cast member or two you want to trot out, that would certainly constitute big news that you have punted from Comic-Con to D23. And I'll reiterate what I said previously, um, and that in in a show that we that I'm not going to again I'm not going to post it uh, because it's pretty is is late, but um, this is Kevin Feige's baby, the X Men. He previously worked on the X Men films. I um, I forget to what capacity, but I'm he wasn't the head honcho. He was he like was the assist- third junior producer, basically. Okay. He's the bottom of the. He's the bottom of the production. I'm, total so I'm pretty sure Kevin was dead, spitting out ideas like, "Hey, do it," and they was just like, "Go get me coffee." <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? And now, he's he's the man running the show. So I think I have. A, a tremendous amount of faith in Kevin Feige to to, to give us an X Men experience, and this is what this is where it gets interesting. And I, and before we get into what kind of I'll ended up ended up ended here. Um, then what where did I leave off? Kevin Feige, the X Men is a baby. Yes, and. I think he's really going to pull out all the stops for this and give us um, X Men, uh, a mutant universe that's fresh and new, which concerns me a little bit because I don't know if he's going to go be comic book accurate with certain origins as i said to you before we can't do magneto um and professor x from back in those days their origin won't fit to in terms of long you know timeline won't fit to who they are now so I think they I think Kevin is going to be real careful in terms of how he does the X Men. So um, uh, um, as time goes on and announcements, obviously in two months, we'll get a better indication, perhaps, uh, of what they're planning to do with the mutants. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So just to recap, I think I see three big things that they obviously left off the docket here that really makes sense for D23. X Verse is number one by far. I think mm-hmm. details around Fantastic Four is number two. So director, cast, they didn't mention any of that. They literally just put the icon up and that was it. And okay. number three is Deadpool. I think those are the three things that really stand out as like obvious absences that would be big news in various mm-hmm. capacities at D23. Mm-hmm. So they, mm-hmm. they clearly have more coming. And yeah. there's a lot of empty slots in that phase six. So I'm assuming oh, yeah. you, see, you might see some of that filled in in a couple months. Let's see. Let's see. 